Right then, welcome back. And uh, yes, we're going to do this. The, well, the amazing. I am a big fan of these. I love them. I think Yamaha went mad. The 1998 YZF R1. The original R1, the red and white one, yes. The iconic colour scheme, they're a million pounds. Um, we don't have a red and white one. Well, we do, but we had this, and this is a gift, and I can't sell it. So, 150 horsepower, what, 200 kilos standard, 182 horsepower, 179.4 tuned up. Now, it's what, five years newer than the Fireblade after that came out, and it is a whole different ball game. It is much faster, it's much sharper, it handles better, it doesn't wheelie as much as other R1s as well, but we'll get onto that when we get going. Uh, where do we go? Well, uh, to stay true to type, uh, we did the Asian League, and we did the, one th the Japan 1000cc Cup. So three racers, Sugo, Okayama, and Suzuka. Um, not particularly difficult or long racers, uh, five lappers. Uh, and we first went to Sugo. Now it's the fast course. I'm a big fan of the fast course. I hate, I hate the GP course with its stinking chicane. Halfway around that massive final right hand corner. Um, it's horrible. Um, hopefully in ride five, the bikes respond a little bit better to inputs. Um, but yes. Set everything to an eight and two, two and eight, eight and two, two and eight, eight and two, um, and just let the bike be. Um, give it a bit of a thrashing in the race. Went and did a time attack, um, and it was better than I expected. Um, the original Fireblade, the 900 RR, is a little bit of a letdown. Yes, when it came out, it was fast. No, it's not fast anymore. Um, the biggest thing that sh was, well, or showed the R1's age was the acceleration and the top speed. Now, up to a certain point, it's okay. That is a K1 GSX-R1000 and an M1000R, and they have just vanished. Absolutely vanished. Um, we're just slightly better on the brakes. Yes, it handles okay. The tyres aren't warming up massively. I went... I went with the wrong front, I went with a medium front and I should have gone with a soft and that would have given me a better idea. Um, we did eventually get past the, well I say M1000, it could have been an S1000, I'm not sure. And um, we did eventually bully our way past the BMW and we vanished off into the distance. Tires were a little bit cold, it's used quite a lot of rear, it likes to steer and drive from the rear. Um, and this, I just love this last corner, uh, I think it's an absolute genius who came up with this, it's huge, it's what, the best part of what, 100 and, well it's a bit more than 180 degrees in it, 200 degree corner that changes from a downhill to a neutral to an uphill and all the way up and all the way down the back straight and I think it's mega, then if you get a bike set up well there and you get it to drift and move about it's absolutely awesome. Um, time attack, didn't make any changes, just put a soft front in and went and did a time attack. Um, we did a 124.2 in the race, we did a 122.5 on the time attack, so 2 point, what, 7 seconds quicker? Yeah, 24, 22, no, 1.7 seconds quicker. Um, which to say we made no changes, I was quite surprised about. Now, the bike handled a lot better, um, I was mucking about with medium fronts and soft fronts and, and plotting on and just seeing how it would respond to changes. And I thought, well, what I need to do is give it a chance. And I just left it as it was, didn't really make any changes to it. And what it did was boil the soft front tire. So we moved to a medium, but then the medium didn't get warm. And I thought, well, I'll make the front a bit softer. And that made it worse, which made very little sense to me. But then I thought, well, it's driving from the rear. So is the rear a bit stiff and that's causing it to slide and spin and wheelie rather than it's digging in and driving forward and that's generating more pace which will generate more energy in the front it was one of those it's slightly backward scenarios so we added two clicks to the front spring hardness and compression we added one to rebound so we essentially went to 10 and 5 for the spring comp the 10 and 5 for the front rebound and then i took one off the rear compression just to try and let it sit into the spring a little bit more rather than the compression damping stopping it let it move about trying to stop it wheeling uh, and it worked we warmed both tires up nicely and like i said we ended up on a 122.5 now that would have put us what 38th yeah 38th 
Did I have a look to see if it was the top 98R1? No. I suspect it probably will be, not that there's any bragging rights in that, but it's batting against proper 1000cc bikes. So get the setup right, get the right tyre, and there's a quick bike in there. Um, Okayama GP, night race. Sorry, speedy buddy. Um, I know how much you love uh, racing around in the dark, because the, the Xbox really, really enjoys um, <laughs> the dark. No, it does not. It's horrendous. YouTube's even worse. If it's dark or a massive area of black or dark grey colour and the Xbox and YouTube just seem to shit themselves and it's no good. But anyway, five lapper at Akiyama GP in the night. Um, again, I went um, with a soft front tyre. Akiyama's very front endy. We've sorted the drive out so the bike's driving. And we were doing okay until lap two when we got into a bit of a a bit of a bun fight with a ZX-10 Kawasaki and we got held up and it just allowed the front three riders to gap and once they got that gap I could not get it back I tried and tried and tried and they just ended war and they just went it didn't help that the soft front tyre um, just boiled itself to death as you can see it's bright orange but we ended up the best part of 10 seconds behind the leader it's a long time since we've done a race where we've been scrabbling round in fourth 10 seconds behind the leader normally it's the hedge abuser um so i felt like i owed the time attack a little bit of a proper go and i went and did madden in 22 laps we did a 127.8 in the race in the dark we did a 125.8 um in the day we used a medium front which stopped it boiling and those couple of changes the bike still wants to go sideways under power but again you don't have to go to full throttle, you can be a little bit gentle, and that's what it really needed. Um, and yeah, it went okay. It likes to wheelie. It's an R1. I'm still three years, three years since the game came out, 2020? Yeah. Best part of three years since the game came out, I am convinced that there's been a glitch in the measurements with the R1 because there's no way the R1 would want to wheelie more than any other 1000cc bike, but they do. They're a nightmare. You've got to muck about with the suspension. And that, people have asked, and I've said, yeah, I'll explain it, and I haven't, and I'm, I do apologise for that, but it's not overly complicated. It's just weird, and it makes no sense, and you just have to muck about until you find the compromise that works for you. How much crazy are you willing to accept? And with the R1s, you've got to accept a bit more crazy than any other bike, and you've got to muck about with the setup. But 98 R1, probably probably the nicest R1 to use because it wants to wheelie the least. I suspect the error in the chassis measurements affects this less because it's probably the shortest and then someone will go online and go no the 4XV's got a, okay I'm sorry it probably has the shortest wheelbase or it affects it the, the muck up with the figures affects this bike less because it's less of a percentage difference between reality and, and theory and everything else. Um, we've already gone 25th on a Fireblade, we would have ended up, what, 30th, 125.886, yes. So it would have been 30th, again, top 98R1, just because it's in with a load of other bikes that no one really wants to use other than the Panagalis and the Fireblades and the ZX-10s. No one goes, oh, 98R1, I'll see if I can get that inside the top 10. That's not really something that happens, although we'll see when. Meerkat probably take it and go two seconds faster than everybody else because that's what he does. But hey, if you're good at it, why not? Uh, last race, Suzuka MotoGP in the wet. Hmm, problems. The bike does not enjoy full wet conditions. Uh, the first lap on a wet race, the tracks obviously piss wet through. The clouds have all gone, so it must have been quite a cloud burst. Now, I quite like the fact that the first lap is drenched protects the tyres a little bit uh, and then you go into laps two, three, four and five and the track dries out. The R1 did not like full wet conditions. There was no feel from the front end. It felt nervous, skittish. You got on the gas, it was wanting to slide sideways. Then the shock and spring got involved and we go around a corner after the um, after the hairpin before you go down the back straight. There's, there's like a, there's a right hander then a couple of left handers and their back end was pumping. And I do not mean equalizing gas pressure within its own body. I mean, it was going up and down like a good one, and it was just like, this is gonna spit me off. Um, come lap two, the bike just came alive. Just the added grip, the added tire temperature, I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden, the bike was like, yeah, let's go. And it just was mint. 
probably, well, I say probably, the Aprilia's good and the MT-10's good, but probably the best bike in these dodgy, it's slightly dry but not dry but not wet conditions. As soon as it got full wet, the tyres were absolutely goosed and the temperature just went through the roof, but yeah, it, in that dodgy sort of lap, lap and a half, it just was awesome. Um, trying to catch up, what we're chasing there, is that an MV? I think it's an MV, isn't it? I haven't got the sound on, I'm doing it with the sound off, but I think it's an MV. Um, I thought I was going to be able to do it on the brakes and then it pulled out a massive gap. Then I thought into turn one, two on lap four and then a fire blade appeared from nowhere. So there was a little bit of a defensive elbow required to encourage them not to try and do that. And then up through the snake, didn't make any ground and then we got lovely drive out of here. That's what I mean, like lap four, wet tyre on the rear, nice and warm. We got a mega drive out there up towards the hairpin and I thought I'll just try and stick up the inside. But the AI are good. I must give credit as the bike and the game's gone on, the AI were terrible. Now they're only slightly terrible, normally off the start when you're racing in a gaggle. When you're just one-on-one -on -one with another rider, they are quite good. There's been a couple of comments recently saying, the AI is shit, I hope Ride 5 sorts it out. Yes, me too, I hope Ride 5 sorts it out, but you know they're going to be shit, and you could only, you never know what you're going to get, so it keeps the game interesting, I guess, especially if you're doing an endurance race. But we basically... Tried to run away, couple of seconds, tyre temperature slowly increased as the race went on. It was moving about, and I quite like it moving about. I'm not one to shy away from a bike that slides about and get on the brakes and she's wiggling and jiggling and sliding all over. I quite like that. Um, Race-wise, we did a 2.10 on wet, uh, and then time attack, we did a 207.8. So usually between five and seven seconds a lap on, fast tire, on uh, wet tyres to dry tyres, that was none of the difference. If that put a 61st, I'm not going to go mad and show you the video. One, because the sound was dodgy as fuck and it was crackling all over. Um, but yeah, 61st again, top R1. Um, and that's your lot. Electronic settings, uh, anti wheelie 1, engine braking 2. It will launch on anti wheelie 1, not a problem. Uh, zero traction control at any point, front, soft or medium. We'll come on to the problems we're using a soft front in a minute, rear soft. Uh, nice bike to use, quick, does all the right things in all the right places. Pron, pro, prons? Prons, no, pros. It feels like a big 600. And that is a pro, it's just got a bit more grunt. It's only a couple of horsepower more powerful than a fully modified, most recent R6. So it's got a little bit of weight and a little bit more torque, but it is a basically a big 600. It's just about quick enough unless there's a really fast straight. And it's the original and best R1, both in real life and to use in the game. Other opinions are available. Cons, it feels like a big 600. Um, same problem with a 900 Fireblade. A ZX6R and an R6 run rings around the original Fireblade, which is a bit poor. Um, it likes to wheelie, it's an R1. I'm still convinced there's a setup problem. And it hurts um, a soft front tire. It depends on the track, I get that. But you go anywhere where there's hard braking zones where you're putting a lot of like downward force and then lateral force into the soft front tire and we're at 10 on the front end already. There's no more support from the suspension. So what you end up being is in that limbo between a soft and a medium where you could do with, I don't know, like an asymmetric or something like that. Ooh, there's an idea for Ride 5. Hmm, probably a bit late, but there you go. R1, 98 R1. I'll change it to red and white the minute I get to level five with it, because I'm going to keep using it. It's one of the bikes that's going to go in the pile. But yeah, pretty, pretty bike. Lots of R7 in there. R7, R1, yeah, peak Yamaha, Japanese sports bike design for me. It didn't get any better than that. And that's your lot. Uh, we're going to do the 2005 Kawasaki ZX6R next time. Uh, there might be a bike in between, there might not. And there with the filler race and everything else. But that's it. Well, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, all the usual jazz. And fingers crossed, I will see you next time. Take care, stay safe. Peace.